Well, hey guys. So, last week I did a video on different types of dubbing and the properties of the dubbing. And many of you had asked me to do a video on how to use uh, tech, or basically techniques of dubbing. So here we go. Um, first I'm going to start by um, maybe like a dubbing head or really, I mean this would work for dry fly dubbing as well. Um, but let's go ahead and coat the hook. By the way, there's a really simple and easy fly, especially for the San Juan. And I know this is a really tiny hook, um, but again, San Juan. This is actually a 23, or I'm sorry, 22 or 20 or something like that. I think so. It's not that small. I've used 26, which are even smaller for the San Juan. But <clears throat> here we go. So let's go ahead and just make a little dubbing head. So again, we're not using very much, very little. And in fact, I'm going to break that off in half so we're using even less and when you're doing it uh, putting on uh, dubbing on you just want to twist one way so when you're doing it when you put it on you just twist one way as I'm doing here just toward that direction whichever way um, you want to and you can see there there becomes a little noodle on there and you can see this is actually what I was talking about before that super fine dubbing which is uh, <clears throat> makes for a really nice, thin, easy to dub on noodle like that. Um, and that will become a very nice and uh, um, even head, and you'll see. And there we go. And that creates a nice little head. Now, I probably could have put a little more on uh, since this is a bigger hook. I'm so used to tying these in 26, I wanted to do a bigger hook for you um, so you could see it. Uh, but that's usually about the size I would want for a 26, maybe uh, even a little less than that for a 26, but you get the idea there. So it becomes a very, let me get you in focus here, it becomes a really nice and uh, um, clean looking head. And that's pretty much what um, what you do with that. Now if you're going to coat the whole body for instance let's go back and um, let's bring this down I'm gonna actually reverse back to the bend of the hook here. Let's say I want to coat the whole body and make a, um, a full body pretty much the same thing of course you can use a little more and when you do it, see I broke off some, but you want to space it out. Um, you don't want a, a, a tight clump because you want to kind of, you still want to create a thinner noodle. You don't necessarily want a big fat noodle. Now you could create a taper with the noodle and as you can see here, um, it's thinner at one end and fatter at the other, right? And that will create a taper on the fly. And then you push it up. Make sure it still has that nice, even taper. And then come up the fly. Now, if you didn't get a perfect taper with it, you can kind of fudge that by doing two wraps, as you can see. And there we go. And I created a nice little body, a uh, nice abdomen. You can tell it's a nice, even look. It's not. Um, you know, it's got a really more smoother look to it rather than using some of the other dubbing. Um, let's go ahead and take this off and I want to show you the difficulty. Here's a piece that I had. Let's say I, did, I put too much on. Let me show you how difficult it is to take this off. You're always going to get a piece that wants to stay. And then you risk fraying your thread, see right there, it's frayed um, every time you do that. So always put less on than you think you're going to use. Let's create a nice uh, long and tapered dubbing noodle. You can tell this stuff is not quite as uh, thin uh, as 
the other, so it's going to be a little bushier. I'm making a thicker, as it is a caddis. And sometimes if you need, you can see I'm wetting my fingers. You can kind of do that to get it a little tighter on there. Sometimes you just need to, you know, really work it. But keep spinning it the same way onto your, onto your thread here. You can tell Bear by just spinning and spinning and spinning, it's created a nice um, tapered noodle. And we'll just come up like we're doing a caddis. Let's uh, taper that a little more. There we go. And usually I'd rib that, but we're just doing this for fun. Um, <laughs> not really going to use this. And then I'm going to grab, this is what I was talking about before, this stuff has a lot more like guard hairs and stuff, so it won't be as thin, so it'll look like little legs and whatnot. Now, when you're doing the head part of it and you want these guard hairs to stick out, you can do this a little more uh, loose. You don't have to make it as tight, and you can tell it's pretty loose, and I'll show you why. Pull everything back so you're right on the head. And I'll just go ahead and whip finish this, and you can see. So. I'm going to adjust this, get you in even tighter. There you go. So you can tell that's already a little more like there's stuff sticking out. There's guard hairs. Um, there's actually not as many as I thought there would be. I must have grabbed a piece that didn't have a ton. But generally there's going to be guard hairs in there. Now what you can do is you can come in. There we go. See how that brings it. You can actually like brush it out with some Velcro or something like that. And uh, any super long pieces, pluck those out. And there you go. So that's, you can see now the, the guard hair is sticking out a little more um, right there. And it just looks like little little feet, little, uh, you know, and that's, that's where you get more of a buggier look. Um, and there's a simple, easy caddis that was really easy to make, and you can definitely use those uh, as a caddis pupa. It's a great little fly. So there's that. So that's that's what I was talking about with like something with like a buggy, like guard hairs and whatnot sticking out. You make a caddis um, or something with you know legs or feelies uh, sticking there. Um, so let's move on to um, <clears throat> doing. Uh, loops. So uh, you can do dubbing loops. Um, there's a new thing. Um, actually, I think OPST made it super popular and it's called composite loops. All right. And then we're going to also going to change out the thread because this is a fine thread. And when you do these loops, uh, you put a lot of pressure on the thread and I bust it all the time if I'm using something thin. This is a 10 aught thread. Um, you'd really want like a 6 aught or a uh, something to that that extent you know or even a little heavier for instance this is a um, like a 140 denier this is going to be kind of um, a mini rundown of streamers with uh, dubbing and you can use this technique for any of them because I tie this fly I'm actually going to tie this one for you guys um, it's a new one that I'm coming up with and I will make a video on that soon so stay tuned for that but I like this fly a lot <clears throat> be really good for like uh, crappie or any kind of small pan fish. All right, forgot about the lead. Really need lead with this one or that 
bead will move. So, so what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> first I'm going to make a tail. I take some, need a little more than that. You can tell this is just going every which way. So what you want to do is you want to pull apart in your fingers like so. What you're going to do is uh, that's aligning the fibers. There we go. So that's going to be a tail. And you can do a couple different things, but generally you're going to want to tie something like this in the center okay of the bunch so I've got about even amounts on each side sticking out um, there are differences uh, you might want to do something different depending but so now you've got even on both sides and then you can pull that back really simple to create a little tail now you can always go under the dubbing if you need to stick that tail up a little more which I do on this fly a little bit and then that is a tail. Now, depending on how, you know, you might need to, for this pattern, I need to wet it, make it thin. But <clears throat> let's move on to a dubbing loop. So for a dubbing loop, what you're gonna do is, you're gonna pull out a lot of thread like this, put your finger here, and then come back. So then you've got enough to work with. You really need enough to kind of work with. And you go over, over once, twice, and then you come down and wrap your thread around the loop twice, like this, and then come back up. And what that does is it creates a thin area at the front, and then just bring wherever you're gonna end your dubbing loop, um, bring your thread back up to that. And then we take a dubbing twister, um, like this, and stick it in and I luckily have this little spot here that I can set my thread on and it keeps it open. You pull out however much you're going to use. I need a little more than that for this pattern. And then we're going to do the same thing as before. We just pull apart in our fingers like so. Now, when you're going to set it in your dubbing loop, Make sure you guys can see that up here. Yep. So, you really want to make sure that this is on the loop evenly. You don't want big clumps like that right there. So it really helps to take something if you need. Sometimes you place it and it's perfect. Sometimes not. A little easier with the finer or uh, shorter fibers okay and then put your finger here and hold it up and then all you do is and I like to guard the hairs so they don't twist in by holding like this with my, the rest of my fingers but for the sake of the video so you can see you just spin and you can really give it a good spin and then let go Get those out of the way, do the same thing. Again, I'm gonna guard it this time. And then once that spins, let go and the rest will spin like that, okay? Now, as you can see, some of these are trapped in there. So you really want to, if you're gonna do a dubbing loop and make a nice even streamer, you wanna come through. And luckily with this stuff, it's really easy to pick out. Some materials are tougher to do. You can tell that kind of picks it out and makes everything kind of going, standing up straight, going the right way. And when you're actually going to put it on your fly, um, you want it all to align back rearward. So you're going to come through. And 
and start wrapping this up your hook. The camera doesn't last very long. Great quality camera, just doesn't last uh, filming long, so I wanted to get you guys some close up. So, there we go. So now you're making, you made a dubbing loop by wrapping up and pulling rearward each time, and generally that's what you're going to do. Capture that loop. Pull everything rearward. Then, after you're done wrapping, you're going to want to, because it's going to be all spun around the hook and look funky, you're going to want to pick out what you did. And that's how you make a dubbing loop. Now we're going to do one more so you can see it again. And sometimes you might want to just brush it, so use like a stiff toothbrush or, or Velcro like this. There we go. And then let's do one more. Okay. And we're going to take uh, some hairline. So, this I need the more powerful camera. Of course, the camera stops working. Ooh, my auto my autofocus just broke on this. Darn. Well, you're going to have to see it, I guess, with this wide angle. That might mean the end of my fly tying videos. We'll see. So, so as you can see, this is shorter fibers, guard hairs and whatnot. But you can also, um, you really don't, you can pull it apart a little bit in your fingers, but it's just not going to do a lot. Um, to align the fibers much. They're just going to be kind of any which way, but I do pull it apart a little <clears throat> Something like this you can still do a dubbing loop and so you just stick it right in there and Move up and then twist You want to keep it even Now with this picking it doesn't really work too well because it's short fibers, it's just not needed, but you know, just brush it out like this. And you're gonna pull some out, that's okay, guys. That's just what happens. A little picking. There's a couple of the longer fibers, usually not too many because they're short. So, there we go. So, what you did is you created a little hackle again. Pull rearward just like you would with anything. What that does is you can tell that that makes actually some longer fibers there rather than um, Rather than the shorter stuff that we just used, that was hairline dubbing. It's the same type of thing as uh, what we were doing for the caddis. But that became, you know, a, a shorter, thinner head. Um, and we can just whip finish. it and that's pretty much 
what I do with that fly. Now, of course, I'm going to trim this and I'm going to end up, uh, um, basically it'll look like that when I'm done because I end up putting eyes on it and everything. So, but that's, uh, the fly guys. So, um, that's pretty much a dubbing loop. That's how you do a dubbing loop. You can do it with longer fiber stuff and make more streamer style. Um, you can do it with shorter stuff for heads, like bushy heads. Um, you can, you know, it, that's pretty much a dubbing loop. So, sorry my other camera died and you weren't able to see that last dubbing loop really close, but it is what it is. Hopefully I can get it fixed. But, yeah, that, I mean, that's it, guys. If there's any other questions you have on dubbing um, techniques and what to do, um, let me know. Um, a lot of people, you know, talk about using wax, and you really don't need it when you're doing dubbing. I mean, you just keep twisting it, sometimes wet it with your fingers if you really want to keep it nice and neat. Uh, but wax, I don't really use wax. I almost never do. I did when I first started. It kind of made it a little easier, but try not to use wax. It just, um, it's not needed at all, really. And you can make sub a, a really, just get the right material, you know, that really super fine dubbing. You saw how thin that noodle was. Um, without wax, without wetting, without anything, it just gets on there really clean. Um, you know, it just get the right material of what you're looking for. If you want a buggier look, use something a little more, you know, not that won't dub on super, super neat, you know. Um, get something, uh, you know, but if you want a neat look, um, you know, like really fine, or if you're using tiny flies, get that, get something like a super fine or something, and, and, and it'll come out a little cleaner, a little neater. Um, you know, you don't need the wax to do that, so. Um, and that's that guys. Well, thanks for watching. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.